For you to understand the context and what I'm about to tell you, I will first need to go back to 2005. That is when my brother bought the GeForce 6600 GT, which came with Splinter Cell Chaos Theory as a bonus, like, you know, like promotional deal. The 6600 GT is a fourth generation of pixel shader supporting graphics cards and was released in, I believe, 2004. It is a mid-range graphics card, not high-end, not like the top end, not enthusiast class, just mid-range. Our monitor resolution was 1024 by 768. When I installed Splinter Cell Chaos Theory and tried playing it, at that resolution, with all the graphical effects turned on, it ran like shit. I had two options, either turn off some of the effects, if not all of them, or drop the resolution. If I would turn off all the expensive pixel shader effects, and mind you, this is on a graphics card of the fourth generation pixel shader card, it would run close to 100 uh, frames per second, and the monitor's refresh rate was 100 hertz. So it ran, it, so it would run about 70 to 80 frames per second. If I, however, turned on all the effects and dropped the resolution to 800 by 640, the frame rate would be around 50 to 60. It would look better because of all the effects, but it also looked blockier because of their lower resolution. If I tried playing Half-Life 2 at high settings, it would run like shit. If I tried playing Doom 3 at high settings, it would run terribly. If I tried playing Far Cry 1 at high settings, it ran horribly. If I tried playing Fear 1 at high settings, it would run terribly. Mind you, these are all titles which were released in 2004 to 2005 running on a mid-range graphics card released in 2004. All those games looked incredible and ran like shit. Fast forward to today. You have the fourth generation of ray tracing supporting graphics cards from NVIDIA, the RTX 5000 series. What happens if you, for example, turn on a game like Cyberpunk and turn on path tracing on a, for example, a 5090? If it's a top-end graphics card, right? If you're playing at 1440p, you actually get pretty good performance. If you want more FPS, you now have three more options. You can reduce the resolution, you can use upscaling, and you can additionally enable frame generation. In 2004 and 2005, we had none of these options. We were limited to just one option, reduce the resolution. Do you understand what's happening? We are currently in a transitional period where we are slowly but surely moving more and more from rasterization to ray tracing visuals. It's still a hybrid. It will be a hybrid for a long time. But the point is you have now way more options to increase your frame rate with a minimal hit to your visuals. And having experienced, you know, the frame generation and DLSS as opposed to the horrible FSR, I now understand what NVIDIA is going for. It's not about bribing game developers into making games look horrible and run horrible. That's not the point. We're at a point in time that is counterpart to game graphics programming, slowly shifting from fixed function TNL to pixel shaders and eventually is going to drop the fixed function TNL renderer completely. In other words, we're at a point in time where ray tracing is becoming more and more prevalent in future games. And at some point, the minimum graphics settings in new games will mandate ray tracing graphics cards. There will be no way to turn it off except through config file manipulation. It will look like shit when you turn it off uh, or might not render properly at all. And there's nothing you can do about it because the PlayStation 5 and Xbox uh, series have ray tracing, the next generation of consoles will lean even heavier into ray tracing. And as we know, PC graphics trends follow consoles because the same companies that make the graphics chips for consoles also make graphics chips for PC. And so whatever they decide to focus on for consoles will be the same tech they will focus on for PC. And so much like everybody, when NVIDIA first announced the 4000 series with its frame generation, I shat on it. When they announced the 5000 series with its frame multi-frame generation, I shat on it. Now having experienced frame generation and the quality of their upscaler, I admit I was wrong and I look forward to seeing what else they come up with. The only people I have noticed that are against ray tracing are AMD users. People who have no perspective of what the switch from fixed function TNL to pixel shaders was like. And old people that are shaking their hands at a cloud. And, and I don't know, maybe they don't want to go through the same thing again. We're just like a transitional period where we go from old tech to new tech that makes the game looks better. 
I don't know. So the bottom line of what I'm trying to say is Nvidia is not trying to sell you blurry upscale graphics and they're not trying to sell you fake AI generated frames. The point is they're giving you more options to use during this transitional period where performance is inevitably going to suck simply because the hardware has not matured yet. Fourth generation of ray tracing supporting uh, graphics cards still not very good at ray tracing. Fourth generation of pixel shader supporting graphics cards back then in 2004 was not good at pixel shaders at all. You had to buy the best, which was close to 1K. And even then, once you would turn up all the effects, it would still run pretty badly. We're going through the same thing again, and there's no reason to shit on ray tracing. The only thing you really should be angry at is how Nvidia prices their graphics cards and on AMD for following the same pricing trend instead of actually starting some kind of price war. That's pretty much it. Ray tracing is the future. There's nothing you can do about it. And I can't wait when more and more games feature ray tracing on at the lowest settings because global illumination looks great. Ray trace reflections look great. All these things look great. And I'm tired of pretending that this is not what we all wanted all this time. It's just a question of how much all this costs. See you next time.